So over the last three weeks, we've been going really deep into multiplication and division and looking at it in lots of different ways. And now we're going to revisit all those skills again. You might be thinking, well, why do we need to do that? We've already done it. Um, it's really important when you've, learned, when you've learned something and you've learned something really well, that you go back and you do it again. Because then when you do that, you're kind of learning not to forget that that, that you've learned before. Um, I wonder if there's anything that you forget often. Maybe it's which basket to put your socks in. Now, I could never forget because I'm reminded what to do all the time. Um, anyway, enjoy. This is going to be a recap of all the great learning that we've done and it's really going to help it to stick in your memory. So it's time for a little trip down memory lane. Let's remember some of the things that we'd learnt about before. Oh, do you remember when we learnt multiplication with area models? And when we learnt how to do division using matchsticks? Oh, that was great. Let's remember everything that we've done. Um, so to start off with, uh, a few weeks ago now, we used I know so when we were looking at multiplication. And we used examples like this. 6 times 5 equals 30, which we could see with this array. So what will 9 times 5 be? And we were thinking, how will the picture be different? Will we have more 6s or will we have more 5s when we go from 6 times 5 to 9 times 5? And we saw, well, we'll have more fives. We'll have three more lots of five. So six fives are 30, so nine fives must be 45. Um, so let, let me give you a go at this example. Six times five equals 30. What about six times seven? Uh, how's the picture going to change and how are those number facts related? Uh, pause the video. Okay, well, let's have a think. What... Again, what, what stays the same, what changes? It's still lots of six, except rather than having five lots of six, it's going to be seven lots of six. And so the picture will look different by... There we go. It'll be two more sixes. So, of course, in total, it'll be 12 more. And then we moved on to looking at these area models. So, for example, 12 multiplied by eight. And we're saying, well, it's quite hard to work out so many squares there. Now, some of you might just know the answer to that multiplication fact, but many people wouldn't. So if we didn't, we'd have to think, well, how could I break this up into parts to make it easy to calculate with? Um, and of course, there's different ways that can be done. Uh, so what, what could you do there? Uh, pause the video. How can we break down either the 12 or the 8? OK, and let's have a look at, at some possibilities. Again, it could be, in the most normal way, is we could split the 12 up into 10 and 2. 10 times 8 and 2 times 8, add it all together. Equally, one of my favourites is, think, well, 6 8s and another 6 8s. In total, that's 12 lots of 8. Uh, so we just need to double 48. Or again, maybe instead, we could think, well, if I know 12 5s and 12 3s, I could just split up the 8 into a 5 and a 3. Uh, so 12 5s are 60, 12 3s are 36. Add them together, of course, still 96. Now, I've just, I've always loved getting work through from Toby and Edward. Um, so again, I'm not sure from the, the two the two twins there, I'm not sure who the artist was, but oh, I just love it. So I thought we'll, we'll keep this image. It's a, it's a great one. And it reminded us about how we introduced division. Um, super octagon to the mathematical rescue. So I love this one. When we were looking at 40 divided by 8, we're thinking, well, the, the thought process is how many 8s in 40? And we use octagons to think about that. So, so I think this one was 20 divided by 8. We saw as 2 remainder 4. 2 octagons, 4 is the remainder. And that was the thought process for all these examples as well. Um, and again, I love this example from Ben. We're going to come to a question that Ben's written later. Um, but look at this for a combinations example. We've been looking at lots of different forms of multiplication. Mr. Harron has six football shirts and four pairs of boots. He has 24 outfits. Can you see how Ben has, has shown that? So he's thinking, well, for each, uh, for each pair of boots, the, he could wear a pair of boots and then each of those six outfits. Um, and uh, all those six shirts and same for that pair of boots. So in total, this is actually a multiplication. So have a look at this example from Beth. She went for 14 tops and four skirts. Um, is that 18 different outfits that can be worn or is it 56? And so one of them is the right answer and one of them is the, the common mistake. Now, tell the screen which one's the right answer and which one's the common mistake. If you need a bit more time, you can pause the video now. Now, 
the right answer was 56 because this to each of the 14 tops you could wear with this skirt or each of the 14 tops can be worn with this one or this one or this one so in total i need to do four multiplied by 14. the mistake is just adding up all the pieces of clothing now talking about mistakes i made one yesterday and clara found it so um the the extend task um extend b task uh, which actually I think was on the Wednesday episode, um, had this, it had this Venn diagram. And in the answers, it said that in this oval would, are numbers that are fa factors of 18. And this in this oval are numbers that are factors of 30. And there was a mistake and I, and I made it. Um, now, I wonder if like Clara, you can pause the video and you can find the mistake. Can you see what which number I'd positioned incorrectly? Well, did you see that it was the six? Um, because the six is a factor of 18, but Gareth, it's also a factor of 30. So the six should have gone in here. Now, later I went back after I found out that I'd made that mistake and I actually changed the picture. Um, and I thought, well, I'm gonna need to replace that six. Um, now pause the video. What could I have replaced it with? Well, shall I show you what I went for? I thought, well, I need in this section for there to be a number that's a factor of 18, but that's not a factor of 30. And the one that I went for in the end, well, it was, it was nine. Thanks, Clara, for, uh, for helping us all out there. Great job. So for today's task, we review all the different skills we've covered over the last, uh, the last three weeks. You can have a go at task A or task B. Uh, they're very similar to each other. They're just the calculations that are used are slightly different and then I've got an extend task um, which hopefully this time I've not made any mistakes please do tell me if I have of course and see if you can work out what the finish the headings on those uh, those Venn diagrams um, so let's have a look through task a so part one is one of the I know so style questions so how can you use this fact to work out the one below um, then again one of these style of questions where we look at um, the sum um, and the product of two numbers um, so what could the answers be the different possible answers we think about how many tenths are needed and then we go to one of Ben's questions um, so very similar format for task B it's just 11 in the calculation the challenge in the calculation is a bit different um, so as normal I hope you get really stuck into this and I'll be back next week Join us here on one of my favourite little walking spots. So you might be able to see there the little pole that's lying down there. And I thought I'd come here just to tell you a little bit about next week. So next week we've got a week on measures. It's going to be quite an unusual week. So we're going to see clocks with hands missing and rotated clocks and different money and different money systems and different ways of measuring. So it's going to be really, really good. Looking forward to it. And I'll see you back on Monday for that.